Okay. Recording in progress. Got it. Mm -hmm. All righty. Got it. Shabbat shalom, Jackie. Mm. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Um, yeah, shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Susan. So hey, good. Sheldon. Hey, Susan. Where are they? Who? <laughs> They're right there. You can't see them. I can see them. Oh, there they are. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. We're going to get started in just a moment. Um, if you can make sure that your microphone is muted, that would be incredible. Thank you so much. Um, there, we, there we go. A nice pre-Shabbos stretch. Just... Okay, just one second. Where did my C door go? And while we're waiting, uh, feel free to take a moment just to plant your feet firmly on the ground, to take a deep breath in and out and to get settled in the moment. Okay, and just confirming for our friends on Zoom that you can hear my voice at this moment? Yes. Okay, good deal, thank you. Yes, we can hear it. Wonderful, wonderful. We are going to get started with a nigun to help us get into the Shabbat spirit. It's the one that we haven't sung in quite a while, so I hope that it will, that it will bring back some good memories from the last time that we sung it. I didn't plug in my guitar. Maybe that might be contributing to our friends not being able to hear us. There we go. There we go. That'll do it. 
We are going to welcome in Shabbat with the lighting of Shabbat candles. And it's my pleasure to invite Ann Anderson to come up and light the candles for us. As we enter, as we enter this sacred time of Shabbat, may Adonai help us put aside our stresses of daily life and absorb the calm of this holy moment. As Shabbat begins, may Adonai revive our ability to feel the infinite potential that ceases afford us, to regather our, our scattered cells, in the hallowed space of Shabbat creates, may Adonai refresh our connections to our loved ones and community, expanding the threads which bind us together. Asher Kishana the Mitzvotal Vitivanu the Hadlik Neas Shell Shabbat. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Aolam Asher Kishanu the Mitzvot. We are on page 134 with Psalm 98. The words are Zamru Ladonai Bechinor. Sing praise to Adonai with the lyre, with the lyre and with melodious song. And with this psalm, we acknowledge that music can be enhanced, can be um, can be adorned with instrument, with harmony, and it only makes it sweeter. Samru Adonai Bechino Bechino Bekozimra Samru Adonai Bechino Bechino Bekozimra Samru Adonai Bechino Bechim Bechim Samru Adonai Bechino Bechim Samuladona, Bechino, Bechino, Samuladona, Bechino, Bechino, 
We turn to page 138 as we welcome Shabbat as though she were a Shabbat bride. Shabbat Adonai Echad, Echad, we cried Shabbat, the Kuven Achat, he he me for Haberaka. There are sneakers at Sukha, so I say, then Please rise in the ways that you're able. Boy, the shalom, a terrid bala. Gambe simcha, uf do hala. Tochem une, am sigula. Boy, hala. Boy, hala. Le <laughs> Please remain standing as we turn to page 146 for the words of Barhu. Da 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 da
ยาดาดายดายพายยาดาดายดายพายยาดาดายดายดายยาดาดายดายดายยาดาดายดายพายยาดาดายดายดายเอ็มไอยาวิเอ็มไอพรีเพย์ Are you listening? My prayer. Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Baruchu et Adonai, Amen. Yada da da da, yada da da da, yada da. Yada da da da, yada da da da, yada da da da, yada da da da. Please be seated. We turn to the next page, page one hundred and forty-eight. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama Ariv Aravim. On page 152, for the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem. Devod malchuto leolam vaed veahavta eit adonai elohecha vechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol meodecha vehayu hadvarim haela. Asher anochi mitzavecha hayom alvavecha v'shinantam levanecha v'dibarta bam v'shibdecha v'vetecha uvlechtecha v'aderech uvshochbecha ukumecha uksharetam leot al yadecha. Ver hayu etot avot b'nei necha uchtav tam al mezuzot b'techa uvisharecha lema antiskeru ba'asitem et kol mitzvotai v'yitem kedoshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem. Asher hotzeit yatchem me'eretz mitzrayim lihiot lachem lelohim ani Adonai Elohechem Adonai Elohechem Emet. 
we continue with a reading that is not in our prayer books. Um, it's a supplement, and it's my pleasure to invite Sarah Granis to share that reading with us. Mika Mocha reading. They say cold feet are a sign of turning back, the failure of internal will, but I say it can be the other way, the body's anticipation of things to come, whether demons are nipping at your heels or gnawing within, here's the thing. Settle quietly, close your eyes, then take the most deliberate deep breath as though it were the very first God's breath. And when you can feel it penetrate every bit of your being, making the rest of your life possible, you open your eyes and take that first step out into the sea of reeds. Watered feet are just the price of coming home. From Sidur Sha'ar Zahav. We turn to page 158 for the words of Micha Mocha, the celebratory words that we sang after our feet got wet. I feel like I always have something to say about rest. It's almost like it's something that we need on a regular basis. Um, and what new is there to say? Probably nothing. I've probably said it all at this point. You've heard me talk for over a year and a half about Hashki Venu except for it keeps on jumping out at me. So I keep on feeling like I want to say something. On the reading on page 161 though, the words, let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. We ask that God spread over a Sukkot Shalom. And we might think in our head of a physical Sukkah. What's interesting is that we don't ask for a fortress of Shalom. We don't ask for armed guards of Shalom. We don't ask for um, uh fire-breathing dragons of shalom. We ask for a dwelling that seems like it could be not that structurally sound. 
and we ask for a dwelling that is open on all four sides, which I didn't notice until we had this reading. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life storms. We don't get true peace and friendship when we have our all of our walls up, all of our fortresses surrounded by moats filled with alligators guarded by dragons who breathe fire. We have true peace when we allow for some openness and support of others. And even if it doesn't seem logically like the most structurally sound thing, we feel it in our hearts. That's true, shalom. In understanding among us, let peace and friendship be our shelter from life storms. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life storms. Ashkiveinu, Adonai Eloheinu, Vehamideinu, Bechayim. Ashkiveinu, Adonai Eloheinu, Vehamideinu. Baruch Ata, Ata Adonai Haporei Sukkot Shalom. Shalom Aleinu Be'al Kol Amo Yisrael. Baruch Ata, Ata Adonai Haporei Sukkot Shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kol Amo Yisrael. Shalom. And understand among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from like storms. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life storms. We continue on page 164 with the words of Tefillah, the core part of our service. Please rise in all the ways you are able. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agitehilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Vimoteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Elohe Leah Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora El Elyon Gomel Chasadim Tovim Vekone Hakol Vezocher Chasdei Avot Vimahot Ume Vig Ula Livne Vnehem Lema Anshemo Veahava Melech Ozer Moshia Umagen Baruch Ata Adonai Magin Abraham Vezrat Saram Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye HaKol Ata Rav Lehoshia Mashiv HaRuach Umorid HaGashem Mechalkel Chayim Bechesed Mechaye HaKol Berachamim Rabim so mech noflim verofe holim, umatir asurim, umekaye memunato, lishene afar, micha mocha baal geburot, umidomelach, melech memit umekaye, who mats me a hishua? Benemana tala ha hayot ha ko. Baruchata adonai. Mechaye ha ko. Atakadosh, Vishim hakadosh. The kadoshim before yom ya hallelujah sela. Baruchata adonai. Please take a moment for your own silent prayer, and when your personal prayer is complete, feel free to be seated. We are on page 178. Shalom Rav Yisrael Acha Tassim Yem Shalom Rava Yisrael Amcha Tassimim Le'olam Ki atahu 
Shalom Shalom And we move from peace to peace, from prayer to peace, from prayer of peace to prayer of peace. We turn to page 180 for the words of Asa Shalom. Oh, This week, we are reading from the Torah portion, Ki Tisa. And just as a heads up, Moses is still on Mount Sinai. We are now four Torah portions since Moses went up on Sinai and God started giving Moses some commandments. It's been a while. It's been a month to us, at least. It's been a month. And God has just given all these instructions about how exactly the chokhmei lev or the wise of heart are to make all of these holy instruments and places and anointing materials. And finally, after four months of partiotes of commandments that are going along the lines of 
laws and commandments and do's and don'ts and this is how it should be and this is what I want and this is how you're going to make it and these are the materials. We finally read from chapter 31 verses 12 and 13, speak to the Israelites and say, nevertheless, you must keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you through the ages that you may know that I, Adonai, have consecrated you. You shall keep the Sabbath, for it is holy for you. One who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does work on it, that person shall be cut off from among kin. Seems pretty reasonable that with all that God is instructing, that God is also making sure that the Israelites know how important it is after working their tails off during the week that they have to make time for rest. Oh my gosh, Rabbi's talking about rest again. Oh my gosh, when will she stop? It's almost like we get together every day that is a rest day. Isn't that so wonderful? And so they all live happily ever after. So we read then chapter 31, verse 18, upon finishing speaking with him on Mount Sinai, God gave Moses two tablets of the pact, stone tablets inscribed with the finger of God. And he went down the mountain and everything was in fact, happily ever after. Wrong. Obviously, we know what happens. Moses comes down from this wonderful retreat up on Sinai, communing with God. And it seems as though both God and Moses have this incredible idealized way of the way that they're going to have this uh, breach, this covenantal relationship. And then Moses comes down the mountain and sees that the people that he is leading are, let's just say, not acting the way that God's people are supposed to act there's a golden calf in the mix. It's not great. God is really mad. Moses calms God down. Moses gets really mad. We could get into detail about the various punishments. There are four different ones. Then God calms down Moses. We have two anger issues going on here amidst a lot of stress. And we'll just be honest neither God nor Moses would act in a way that I would consider to be ideal versions of themselves. It's not great. They just left this ideal uh, retreat. If anybody has ever been to a retreat or a conference and you come with these like awesome, really beautiful ideas and you're like, I know how to change everything and everything's going to be perfect. And I know exactly how it's going to look. And then you come back into the real world and you're like, this was not what I expected. This was not my plan. I want to highlight actually though, not the golden calf where the Israelites obviously messed up. And we can talk about Aaron's role in that. And not actually what God and Moses did to punish the Israelites. There's plenty to delve into on that front. However, something jumped out to me as I was studying this week about what happens after. After they've decided that the punishment has, that they've done all the punishment that they need and want. Um, and God and Moses are starting to regroup. Okay, what do we do next? Exodus chapter 33, verses 7 through 14, actually illustrate that Moses and God regroup away from the community to rebuild and, restrength, and to strengthen their own bond before dealing with anything else. It reads like this. Now Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp at some distance from the camp. It was called the tent of meeting, the Ohel Moed. And whoever sought Adonai 
would go out to the tent of meeting that was outside of the camp. And Adonai would speak to Moses face to face as one person speaks to another. And then he would return to the camp, but his attendant, Joshua, son of Nun, serving as deputy, would not stir outside of the tent. Moses said to Adonai, see, you say to me, lead this people forward, but you have not made known to me whom you will send with me. Further, you have said, I have singled you out by name, and you have indeed gained my favor. Now, if I've truly gained your favor, pray, let me know your ways that I may know you and continue in your favor. Consider too that this nation is your people. And God said, I will go in the lead and will lighten your burden. And Moses replied, unless you go in the lead, do not make us leave this place. For how shall it be known that your people have gained your favor unless you go with us so that we may be distinguished? Your people and I from every people on the face of this earth. And Adonai said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have asked, for you have truly gained my favor and you have singled and I have singled you out by name. In this set of verses, we get a glimpse, a glimpse into an incredibly vulnerable moment between Moses and God. This golden calf situation, conflict, however we want to describe it, revealed things not only about the people of Israel to God or to Moses, but it also revealed ways about God that Moses needed to know and ways about Moses that God needed to know. And Moses deeply yearns to know God better because if he is going to be leading this people, he wants to know that he has someone to be by his side. He wants to know that he is not in this alone when the people of Israel are on whatever they are on, what kick, whatever kick they are on, whatever whining match that they are on, they are getting incredibly difficult. And Moses wants to know that he's not going to be left alone. And this is something that cannot be done in the midst of all of the chaos of being amidst the people. Moses and God had to commune separate. Take a moment, take a breath, have a conversation. And then in Exodus chapter 34, verses one through seven, after that time of regrouping, after having that moment of vulnerability, then we see that Moses and God try to bring tablets back down again. We often talk about revelation and the project of the covenant as though it happened once and then the Jewish people messed up. But from a leadership standpoint, it's important to notice that Moses and God were figuring things out as they were going along as well. They ended up getting frustrated and angry at the behavior of those they were working with. They realized what things they needed to know about one another. Moses says to God that he feels he isn't being set up for success. And we see in this portion that Moses and God are regrouping themselves and starting over as well. How many of us have needed a moment to take a breath, to regroup, to have a conversation with somebody you're working with on the side, and then to start all over again? And maybe we go back up our Mount Sinai, whatever that is, a second time, or even a third or a fourth. This Torah portion is where we get the verses that we sing during Yom Kippur. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum v'chanun, Erech apayim v'rav chesed v'emet. Adonai, Adonai, 
a God compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and faithfulness. And while this Torah portion frames it as though Moses is calling out to God these names with these names, perhaps we can read it slightly differently. In this moment, before going up Mount Sinai once again, perhaps Moses is invoking the qualities that he wants to bring with him as they try this mission that had failed previously. The tablets were broken once. How do we know that they're not going to break again? And not just that they were broken, Moses broke them. Rather than being trapped by inner worry, inner conflict, inner anxiety, will this ever work? God and Moses. showed us that it's actually okay to have a moment of vulnerability, but that that doesn't mean we then stop our project if it's important enough to us. We have to go back up the mountain again to bring back those commandments, those tablets, that connection and that covenant. So as we enter Shabbat, let us remember those moments where we need to take some steps away to reflect and then to try again. And that when those happen, those aren't just some kind of secular course correction. It's not just strategy. Those are actually holy moments because that is acting like God and Moses. If it's good enough for God and Moses, let's allow ourselves some compassion and grace and kindness to circle back ourselves, to allow ourselves do-overs, and to try once again. Can you hear at zone? May this be God's will. With these words of Torah on our heart, we think of those who are in need of healing, healing of body, healing of mind, healing of spirit. If you are joining us virtually, I encourage you to bring whoever you are thinking of to your mind and to your heart. And if you would like, you may also type their name in the chat. And if you are in person, with us, please feel free to share their name aloud or in your heart as my hand passes over your section. We'll pause a moment in case anybody is still typing. For all those names that we've said aloud, those that we've typed in the chat, and those that we keep in our hearts, we turn to page 371 for the words of Misha Berach. Shepherd, 
Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. He shall around the Spirit, and let us say. Amen. We now turn to page 100, or sorry, 586 for the words of Alainu. Please rise in the ways that you are able. Alinu lishabeach la don hakol la teit gedula liot sebreshit shelo asanu kego yeharatzot velo samanu kemishpechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem begoralinu kecho hamonam. Va'anach nu korim, u'mishtachavim u'modim, lifnei melech, melechei ha'machim, ha'kadosh baruch hu. Ve'nemar, ve'haya adonai, le'melech al kol ha'aretz, ba'yom ha'hu. He is seated. We take a moment to think of those who are no longer with us on this earth, but remain with us in our hearts, in our memories of them, and in their ways that they influenced our own lives. This Shabbat, we are remembering those whose yard sites occurred this past week. Please rise as your loved one's name is read. Yeno Baumgarten remembered by Nina Laurent. Theresia Baumgarten, remembered by Nina Laurent. Harvey Cohen, father of James Cohen. Mitchell Friedman, father of Audrey Perlman. Osher Galikman, remembered by Larissa Krasnovskaya. Henry Kahalis, father of Susan Toth. Sadie Katz, mother of Phyllis Domino, Robert Keir, remembered by Jill Mallison, Daniel King, remembered by Babe King, Liesel Marks, mother of Monica Silberberg, Ingrid Orth, remembered by Sonia Radcliffe, Louis Rosenbaum, father of Herman Roman, uh, Rosenbaum, Dorothy Rothback, mother of Craig Rothback, Samuel Weiner, father of Alan Weiner. Simon Zone, remembered by Re Leslie Rothback. And Cecilia Pollock, remembered by Nina Laurent.
We now invite all who are observing their first year of mourning to rise at this time. And we now rise as a community with our mourners and turn to page 598 for the words of the mourners Kaddish. Yit gadal vid kadash me rabba, be alma di brach hirute viam lich malhute, be chayefon uviomechon, uv chaye de hol bait Israel, be agala uvisman kariv imru, amen. Yehesh me rabam vorach le olam ulame almaya, yit barach vishtabach vid pa ar vid ramam vid nase. Vit hadar, vit ale, vit halal, shame de kudsha, brihu. Le ela min kol birchata vishirata. Tush bechata venechemata. Da amiran be alma ve imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya. Bechaim alenu ve o ko yisrael, ve imru, amen. O se shalom bimromav, hu ya ase shalom. Alenu ve alko Yisrael, ve alko Yoshvete vel, ve imru, amen. Zichonam libracha, may all of their memories be for a blessing, to which we say, amen. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to invite Ronnie Peterson to share words of announcement with us to let us know what is going on at Temple Beth Torah. Oh, so many things. Oh, so many things. Woohoo! How exciting! We have a lot of exciting events coming up between now and the end of April. So, as not to go on for too long, please note that additional information for all of these can be found in the weekly email on the website or by contacting the office. Rabbi Zoe will lead Torah study this Sunday at 11 a.m. on Zoom. Join us tomorrow at 7 p.m. for game night. This is a free in-person only event for adults ages 21 and up. Walk-ins are welcome. Bring your favorite game or play one of the ones that we are going to bring. WTBT invites you to a women's pre-Passover dessert Seder. This is an in-person only event for women ages 11 and up. Registration deadline is Thursday, March the 23rd. Join Rabbi Zoe for a Zoom-only adult learning session all about the Omer on Wednesday, March 29th at 7 p.m. to learn about the counting of the Omer. Registration online, register online to receive the link. On Sunday, April 2nd at 12.30 p.m., TBT member Abe Masliak will speak about his journey to the displaced persons camp where he was born. Exodus and Displacement, a Passover retelling, will be a multi-access program. Register online by March 31st. Join us on the second night of Passover, Thursday, April the 6th, at 6 p.m. for our community Seder. Register online by, April, by March 24th. Contact the office for scholarship information. Our interfaith Yom HaShoah program Telling Lost Stories will be held on Sunday, April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. and feature our Holocaust Torah scroll and its story. There will be a multi, this will be a multi-access program with a registration deadline of April 21st. Remember that Monday, April 3rd at 9 a.m. is the deadline to order for the Wise Sons Passover food pop-up on Wednesday, April the 5th. Donations to support earthquake victims in Turkey will be collected through March 27th. Checks or cash made out to TBT can be dropped off into the Sadaka box in the social hall or left at the office. You can also donate online, choose a social action fund, and write JDC in the remarks section. Contributions will be pooled and sent to the Joint Distribution Committee to aid in their, in their work. Thank you to Troop 153 Scouts for running AV and to Jack Smosky for representing the worship committee tonight. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And thank you to Ronnie Peterson.
who is a past president on our board. And we are grateful for all the work that she does. We continue with additional gratitude. There's always more gratitude to give. If you are in the same room with somebody who you consider family, however you define it, I encourage you to reach out to them. If you are not in the same room as somebody who you consider family or who you want to send this blessing to, I encourage you to hold them in your heart and we hope that they receive the fruits of this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine God's face upon you and be gracious to you. May God's face turn to you and grant you peace, to which we say, Amen. Amen. And we are going to do Kiddush and Motsi in the back. Surprise. Um, so um, for our friends on Zoom, I hope that you will say the blessing at home, that you will feel that blessing um, surrounded by us, even as you're doing the blessings at home. We are going to close out with Ode Yavo Shalom Alenu. There are never enough prayers for peace. So we'll say another one. Odiavo shalom alenu, 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 Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom to our friends on Zoom. Eat something delicious for us to enjoy mm -hmm. this Shabbat. And let's hope that we all can stay dry this weekend. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. We're not talking about that. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. shalom. Mm. Mm. Have, fun, have fun watching the Academy Awards. It's like the uh, <laughs> Super Bowl of Hollywood. Uh, I'd <laughs> rather watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> I'm so out of touch, Terry. I don't go to movies much. <laughs> you mean you haven't seen Cocaine Bear yet? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Saw 80 for Brady. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who saw 80 for Brady? Jackie's cat. Oh. <laughs> Jackie's how, cat. how was it? How was yeah. it? It was good. It was, it was cute. Good. Except yeah, it for Brady. I don't care for Brady, but the rest of the movie was good. <laughs> those are gr great That Those are great ladies. <laughs> Yeah, they were. They sure have an age. I mean, they sure have their age. Jackie, Honda, your cat. Yeah, yeah. Bigger than my cat. Yeah, your cat's Sonia, bigger than my Sonia, cat. Sonia, Jane Fonda, Sally Field, Rita Marino, and who am I missing? Uh, Lily Tomlin. Lily yes. Tomlin. Did you see it? I haven't, but it's on. It's um on my list. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. worth seeing. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's cute. It's cute. So. I hope some of you are coming to game night. I know some of you, it's too far a drive, but I hope some, some will think? come. Yeah. You think, you think so, Tosonia? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I miss miss you, uh, far away friends, and hope to see the close the close ones soon. Yeah. All yeah. right. Big so bye, um, bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, bye. 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 Susan and Sheldon. Bye. Bye, Janice. Bye, Jackie. Bye, Candace. Bye. Bye, 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 Sheldon. Bye, bye, cocaine bear. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Bye, Sue.